right, you guys, here's a quick, um, we're going to do the notes from the packet. So we're starting quadratics. This is unit nine. So we have talked about the standard form of an equation. So the standard form of a quadratic equation is going to look like this. f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And what makes it a quadratic equation, there's two things. Number one, the x squared is different than what we've seen. We've just been doing linear equations. This is going to be what makes it quadratic. So if we have linear over here, linear is just where you have y equals x for a form of that. Quadratic is where you have the x squared. And the difference is, is on a graph, a linear is a straight line. A quadratic is going to form a U-shaped curve called a parabola. So when you graph it, it's going to be a U-shaped curve called a parabola. And then the parabola can either face up or it can also face down. But for the most part, that's what it's going to look like. So if we take our graphing calculator and graph these two, this is going to be two equations. And we're going to notice the difference between these two standard form equations is that this one here, the number in front of the x squared is positive. And this one here, the number in front of this x squared is negative. And that's going to make the graph look different. So if I take my calculator and go to um, graphs and plug in this equation x squared, plus 2x minus 5, my equation is going to look like that. So if I was going to take this, I know my vertex is where it starts to boomerang around. I can look at my table, control T, and see, all right, where is that going to boomerang around? And I can tell from my graph on here, that it's about negative one something. And if I count one, two, three, four, five, six, it should be about negative one, six. And I look here and I see negative one, six is here. That's my x value. That's my y value. And you'll notice the ones surrounding your vertex, if they're a whole number, it's going to start repeating. So I'm just going to kind of sketch this at negative 1, negative 6. It's about right there. And it looks about like that. So then if I plug in also, if I remove my table, and I go to graph this second equation, I'm going to get negative x squared plus 3x minus, or plus 7 enter and I'm going to notice now that one is going to go off the graph that if I wanted to see what my uh, table was I know that my x is going to go um, the vertex is positive that looks like it's getting big soon so let's see Oh, that's, sorry, there we go. And we'll see that the vertex is somewhere between 9 and 9. So that is actually going to look like that. So what we notice is that when the A is positive, the graph, the parabola opens, we call this up. And it is like a smile right because it's positive and when the a is negative that makes the little 
parabola is sad and it opens down and it's like a frown. All right, so this negative makes a big difference in how the graph works. The axis of symmetry is an imaginary line, vertical line, vert, eh, oh my goodness gracious, vertical line. Now, when we say vertical line, we think of vux. And this line is going to go through the vertex. Now, what is the vertex, you might ask? Well, I'll tell you in a second. But the formula for the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2 times a. So if I was to look at these equations, I'm going to say, okay, I've got x squared plus 2x minus 5. And if my formula is ax squared plus bx plus c, I can notice that the number in front of my x squared is my a, so in this situation my a would equal 1. In this situation, the, number, the b is the number in front of my plain x b is going to equal 2, and the number that is my constant that does not have an x value is negative 5. So my c, my constant, is going to be negative 5. So in looking at this, the formula for the axis of symmetry, if I was going to find my axis of symmetry from here, I would take my formula, x equals negative b over 2 times a, and I plug in the a and the b into this formula. So I get x equals negative 2 divided by 2, because 2 is always, that's part of the formula, and then whatever the a value is. So in this equation, x will equal 2 divided by 2, which is, or negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. So in this situation, my x would equal negative 1 is my, is my axis of symmetry. Sorry, axis of symmetry. This is x equals negative 1. We know it's a vertical line. Now we're looking at the vertex. The vertex is this turning point, okay? It is the very lowest or highest point. So it's where the parabola starts to turn around. When the vertex is the lowest point, so in this case it would be the lowest point, that is called a minimum. This would be a minimum. When the vertex is at its highest point, which that would be the case when it's upside down, it's called a maximum. Okay? So we'll do one example, and then that'll be the end of this video. So we're going to take this. I've got my a value is the number in front of my x squared, which is 1. My b value, which is the number in front of my x term, which is 8. My c value, which is the number, which is my constant, which would be 15. So I'm going to look at this, and already I know, judging that this is positive, that my parabola is going to look something like that. I know it's going to be facing upwards because the A is positive. So if I take my axis of symmetry formula and I plug in my values for that, I get X equals minus 8 is, and yes, 
So if 8 was a negative 8, then it would turn it positive. When it's a positive, the formula turns it to be a negative. And then the 2 is part of the formula times 1. So in this case, x is going to equal negative 4. So I can go ahead and just add x equals negative 4, draw a vertical line. That is going to be my axis of symmetry. All right, so I can write in here x equals negative 4. The vertex, in order to find my vertex, I plug this x value into my equation. So I have my equation y equals x squared plus 8x plus 15. I'm going to plug in this negative 4 in for my x. So I'm going to get y equals negative 4 squared plus 8. And then here's another x, so I'm going to plug that negative 4 plus 15. Now, you can just plug this into your calculator and see what it is. However, as I've said, if you plug negative 4 squared into your calculator, it's going to come up as negative 16 unless you do it correctly. So please be very careful with that because you're, you'll get it wrong if you do not pay attention to that. So I like to do it by hand. This is going to be positive 16 minus 8 times negative 4 is 32 plus 15. 16 minus 32, negative 16, plus 15 is negative 1. All right, I plug that in for my vertex. So in my vertex, my x value is going to be negative 4. My y value is going to be negative 1. So when I graph that, it's going to be... <clears throat> negative 4, negative 1, about right here, and I know it's going to be facing up. All right, hopefully that helped.